Hey y'all and welcome back to another video by Umbra's Darkness. In today's video we got three things going on. Our first thing that we got going on is we're going to be talking about Groundhog. This one shouldn't take too long. It should be quick and easy. I'm just going to break down the basics for you. Our second thing we got going on is we're going to talk about the kill event. This one's going to be a little bit more complex as it does have some combat theory discussion in it. And our very third thing is we're going to be picking our 400 subscriber YouTube giveaway person. Uh, so that one is going to be closed, concluded as of this video. Uh, however, while recording this video, we do reach 500 subscribers. So we'll be giving away $20 Google Play giveaway in my next video uh, that will be released on Saturday. So make sure you stay tuned for that video for the code word and all that other jazz. Uh, one thing before we get into it, huge shout out to my wife. Uh, she is the R5 of my clan, Clash of Kings. Uh, she's letting me borrow her account so that way I can uh, record certain steps of the tree takeover and what the king gets to give away. So, huge shout out to her. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Without any farther ado, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Uh, so, on Sundays... We don't have the ability to look at how you get points, except for if I were to wait for that day. And I know a lot of people want to see that day, so we don't have that ability. Uh, but on Sundays, uh, there are a few ways to earn points for Groundhog. You can earn points by hatching insects. So make sure you have your hatches going. You can earn points by queuing insects to hatch, uh, so whenever you start an insect to hatch, you can hatch, uh, earn points by gaining fodder from your fodder farms. You can earn insect, uh, points by starring up insects, by turning insects into fodder, or by, com uh, buying insects with fodder points. The other way you can earn points on Groundhog, the most obvious way to earn points on Groundhog is by dealing damage to Groundhog. So, with that being said, what are my tips and strategies for uh, Groundhog? And then we're going to be talking about tips and strategies for insects uh, as they do. So in your inventory under buff, you want to make sure that you apply a increase attack buff. If you do not have an increase attack, like my wife does not have an increase attack, you would go to store, you would go under buff, and you'd buy an increase attack for 400 diamonds right here. Uh, I do try to pick them up over the course of the ladybug uh i do refresh my ladybug all three times now that mine is able to see all but two items uh but if you do not pick up an item for the ladybug you can always buy it from the store inside of the inventory at any given time for 400 diamonds that's a 24-hour buff start at the beginning and keep going there's no reason to apply the one day defense buff it does not change your damage on groundhog Uh, with that being said, the special ants that you want to choose are going to be the ones that do the most damage. So my wife is a shooter main, so she's going to be choosing things like Acid General here. Now, obviously, all all of now obviously all ants have this tertiary attack. Uh, for Universal ants, it is going to be 30%, right? Uh, at max level, or for the old uh, special ants, the old special ants that were select, it's 35% attack. Or if you're lucky enough and you have a dupe of the main one, like my wife has Reap Master, but it's not a dupe, uh, it unlocks at 38%. So obviously you want that one. So besides that universal buff, uh, there is this skill, um, which increases attack. So you want to make sure that your whatever three ants you have has skill seven that increases attack. This one increases attack by 35%. What the new ants do have going down for them is that like with Reap Master, it increases attack by 30% only and it increases march speed by 50%. Not a huge deal. Not something that we care about nearly as much as that extra 5%, right? Uh, so this 5% compared to that 3%, obviously Acid General would be slightly better if we were just looking at skill 4 and 7 than Reap Master. Um, other ants, like Jack Jumper, still do have the universal 30%. Now, <clears throat> I do still believe Jack Jumper is going to be in the running, uh, just because it is the highest DPSer in the game for 
shooters mathematically. But other ants that I recommend for uh, carriers are not so good here. So like Slim Arched, uh, it has health in its name. So you're not going to want to run your Slim Hunches on your Groundhog. That's why I recommend having multiple different ants upgraded based off of your needs. Uh, so for shooters, what I would recommend running is something like Acid General, Golden Sugar, and Jack Jumper. They all have DPS moves. And they're not. There's not a lot of control in between all three of them, and all of them have an attack on skill seven. Uh, <coughs> now, if you're a carrier, I would have something along the lines of Golden Armor, Golden Sugar, Jack Jumper. Jack, sorry, Golden Armor still does have plus thirty percent on here. Now, its skill six does have a attack defense, but it. Uh, it also increases attack while invading anthills. This will not apply, but it will still increase attack by 10%. Uh, Jack Jumper, again, will increase squad's attack by 20%. And Golden Sugar will increase its squad's attack by 20%. So those are all things that you want to push, not to overemphasize. But if you're ever wondering what should you do, where should you go, that's how it goes. Another thing to note is that it does not matter the position of the special ants as long as their skills can hit the groundhog. The groundhogs do technically count as guardians. However, uh, they're infinite in size. So it doesn't matter where your special ants go as long as they have the range to go there. What that means is Jack Jumper, Golden Sugar, their position doesn't matter. But Golden Armor cannot be in the very back row because it has attack moves with the range of two. The last thing to talk about in abilities to improve attack is evolutions, obviously. Uh, carrier ants do have the bonus of crush, right? They have three different levels of crush. Uh, ripping crush, heavy crush, and crush. They all improve damage against the groundhog. The groundhog, again, does count as three rows of guardian. So that is on carrier's benefit. However, sh shooters, as always are the best ones for carrier or for groundhog and that's because they have things like increased shooters ants crit rate so hey guys real quick again this is going to be an awkward edit um but i'm going to throw this in here real quick when you hit the groundhog you really want to rally the reason you want to rally is because it does increase your rally member attack by 23 percent and everything that you can do to increase your attack is what you want to do or whatever level your rally is it literally goes up one percent per rally center level uh so you want to join the highest troop tunnel uh for my alliance we just say level 23 in my case uh groundhog rally up uh, now that they've introduced that it'll show up in Alliance chat and everything, like normal rallies, maybe we won't be doing that. But you want to try and join the highest rally center as possible because it gives the highest increase to attack. Uh, you should never invade. You should always rally, especially now that they have NPC rallies. So that way you're guaranteed to have your rally go off. You should always rally. You should never, ever invade. That also is another reason why you should be swapping the Raider for Groundhog, because if we look at this and we go to details, it increases your pro unit's attack. Yes, it increases its defense. That does not matter for Groundhog, but it increases its attack 1% per level. Um, and you, again, want to be able to max out your damage to the highest extent possible when hitting the Groundhog, so you have the best chance to get an orange skin. All right, you guys. Uh... Please stick along for the video. I know it's a long one. I'm in the middle of editing it. I'm cutting out as much stuff as I can. Thanks, you guys. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to do Groundhog and what special ants to use uh, and what skills you want to focus on and make sure are maxed in order to benefit you the most. The last thing that we want to talk about for Groundhog Day and a smooth transition into Kill Event Day is going to be insects. Insects, like I said, uh count for hatching insects, starting an egg to hatch, gathering termite fodder, uh, <coughs> butchering insects, starring up insects, and, and using the insect uh, remains to buy insects. Everything counts. It counts on both kill event and groundhog day. So just like special ants, you don't want to do anything to your insects except for uh, hatching them throughout the week. 
Now, I do not recommend you hatch insects except for once you're queen 25 around the clock. Once you reach queen 25, I recommend you hatch insects around the clock at all times. My wife doesn't have this one going because just like me, it would drive me nuts if the timers were not all the exact same. So she has this one not started and she'll start it up once these ones are ready to hatch and she collects them. All right. Uh, so I would start up my insect, my termite farms about four hours before hatch day, uh, specifically four hours before the 0100 UTC special ant day. Uh, and then I would have all these going at least 12 hours in advance before Sunday's uh, day server server starts. For my insects, as you can see, uh, my wife has a bunch of insects. She's been hatching around the clock. If I was like, oh man, I really don't want blue insects, I want to invest them into purple or orange insects, uh, you can click on them and then click this book as long as they're not stationed. And you can either butcher the one, and as you can see, it gives a certain amount of insect shells. Or if you're like, man, I just want to butcher all the blue ones, you can go here. You can click blue insects and you can click select all. As you see, it does not select orange insects, it does not select purple insects, and it only selects the blue insects, so that is really helpful. Uh, if you have something locked, like this giant mantis is locked, and you click select all, uh, it will not select the locked one or the ones that are inside of the, uh, inside of the formation. So that's how you butcher insects if you want to do that. Of note, if you are free to play and you do not buy insects, uh, your orange insect you should be investing into is Atlas Beetle. With the in, uh, new introduction of the cell building, the Atlas Beetle is looking better and better, uh, even for pay to win. And I would not butcher your orange and blue insects, correction, your purple and blue insects in order to make an orange insect i would butcher your blue insects if you don't want to keep them if you're not interested in stationing them like my wife and i do uh and i would buy orange insects only however i would save all of your purples and i would invest into a strong purple uh specifically the rove beetle if you are a shooter or the longhorn beetle if you are a carrier the Longhorn Beetle's combat speed is the worst combat speed for all purples, and it is not higher uh, like it is for other things, so Carrier's Purple is the weakest. However, uh, it does still increase the attack and defense of Carrier's. Um, but I would invest into a Purple if you are free to play. I would not invest into a Orange if you are free to play with your Insect Shells. Alright, you guys, I actually have one more thing I want to talk to you guys about Insects about. It's the break points. I would star up an insect to six star before I start working on another insect. Uh, or I would star up an uh, insect to nine star before I start working on another insect. The reason that I would do this is that six star and nine star are the two break points where you gain the most uh, damage potential. And what I mean by that is if we go and we look at an insect and we look at a war insect uh any one of them they're all the exact same for what what they gain minus uh atlas beetle obviously gains uh counter counter attack counter defense uh but at six star you gain combat speed and at nine star you gain special ant skill attack and defense so i would get a special ant to or a special insect to six star or nine star at a break point before i could even considered working on a second one uh the investment to nine star may be too steep for you if you're free to play or if you have uh if you're only getting orange insects via the insect special growth plan that's 25 usd a month maybe just getting the six star that you get for free there, uh, the two five stars combined, uh, is all that you want to do. It is worth combining them for that combat speed, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to push them to nine star. I will tell you there is a significant damage change in between an eight star insect and a nine star insect, and there is a significant chance of winning in between difference in between a six star and a five star insect. So those are those are again the breakpoints that I'd recommend you level them up for. If I were a free-to-play player, I would pick an Atlas Beetle before I picked any other orange insect. Uh, otherwise, if I were a pay-to-win or a 
person that is willing to spend on only insects, I would pick it one. The first insect I would pick would be of the class that I want. And then the last, the second insect I pick would be an Atlas beetle. And then the third insect I pick would be of the opposite troop in between carrier and shooter uh, that I am not because eventually you will be unlocking that T10. Um, and then the fourth insect I pick would probably be a second Atlas beetle. All right. With that, I would like to talk to you guys about Kill Event. Kill Event is <clears throat> pretty interesting. You get points from insects as well. So there's that. Uh, the other ways that you get points, and I will talk about each one briefly, is by uh, the Squirter, by Direct Player vs. Player, and by Gathering. And we're going to be talking about them in that order. Uh, so the Squirter, you guys... Seems like a pretty cool mechanic. It should be something that should be pretty awesome. Uh, but it's not. It's a huge trap. If you are not one of the top players in your server, if you don't have T the top troop type in your server, so for a newer server, T7s or T8s, or for an older server, T9s and now T10s, uh, I would not do anything with the squirter. The reason that that is, is, well, yes, you do get your resources back. If this reads... 5 out of 30, 9 out of 30. A big guy like me is going to teleport in right here and we're going to hit this squirter and what we're going to do is we're going to send a troop there and then we're going to click on here and we're going to click speed up, 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 speed up until it says 2 seconds left and then it's going to hit and you're going to have no chance to recall your troops or anything like that. It's going to be bing bada bing bada boom. Right? And then I just wasted 5 stamina in order to get you know, 7 million, 8 million, 4 G points, right? Uh, I've seen someone gain 750 million points off of one squirter hit, you guys. Uh, and that's not good. Uh, so that's, that's how I would play it as a server. If I were the king, I would kick everyone out of the squirter as often as possible and tell them in zone chat, do not go to the squirter gather do not go to the squirter gather unless they're march power unit size right so if i click on troop details i can see their part power units unless their power size was above 2 million so i would leave this one in i would leave this one in and then i would not have sent my own or my wife wouldn't have sent her team three or team four whichever one this is for her uh and i would kick out luciferus and i kick out moon dragon um and that's solely because they're not at 2 million power. Uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the amount of points you're going to give for to the uh, opponent for the amount of points you're going to gain, right? Because even if uh, Lex and Naya lose against the, uh, the person invading, they're still going to gain points for killing that opponent's teammates or that opponent's insects if that, or in, ants, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's how I do Squirter. The next way, or the next way to earn points easiest, is by defeating uh, ants, uh, which is how the squirter earns so many points, obviously. Uh, but defeating ants in player versus player, the way I would do player versus player is if I wanted to go in, the easiest way to get hit is to not have a shield. So I would first scout someone's uh, gathering pile, whether it be your own servers or or not. Then I would make sure I have very little resources here. If I really wanted to be make sure my opponents got nothing off of them, I would uh, lock off my gathering piles, right? So I would lock the I would land lock these by going build and fill tunnel, and I would just fill these right here, just like this. And I would make sure I have no resources for my opponent to gain, because I don't want them to hit me. I just want to hit them. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you hit them, uh, you won't get any resources. So it's a give and take. Uh, and then the last thing I would definitely do, though, is I would go to garrison and I would remove their garrison. So that way, if they do hit me, yeah, maybe they get some of the resources that I've been stealing off of their players. But they don't get any points, right? You don't get points for hitting a player. You get points for killing the, in the ants that are guarding their troops. Uh, which I think is not the smartest. I think you should get points for hitting hitting a player as well, as long as you actually win that victory. Uh, that would change how player versus player works so much. The last tip I have for you guys is never rally. Uh, 
rallies are only meant for groundhogs uh, because they're super clunky and they allow your opponent to see so many different things. Uh, that being said about that, uh, I actually remember one more tip I want to basic tip I want to tell you guys, and that is that your sentinel tree. Uh, this is my wife's account, so I don't know where it is. But your sentinel tree, you want to level up to level 17. And I do talk about that in my I'm Queen 20, now what video. Um, but your sentinel tree does change characteristics here. Can I talk to my wife? Only level 14. Uh, but your senti sentinel tree does gain a very important thing here. Uh, if you click on more info at 17, you can see rough info of special ants and enemy rally. So that way you can see whether or not what level they are and stuff like that. It is very important that you at least reach, reach 17, but obviously the higher the better, the more information. Uh, because sometimes your opponent will send like T1 carriers just to get gain resources. And if they're doing that, obviously you can hop down to your entrance and station. Uh, for that reason, while you are doing player versus player, you want to be able to click inside your entrance, click here, and then click garrison, right? So my wife can do that really quickly because her layout allows that. Uh, again, I wouldn't do player versus player, you guys, unless I was the, one of the stronger players in my team. I had no other options. Uh, if you guys would like... Uh, a more in-depth strategy guide for player versus player, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. I don't know if there's a huge interest in it from my server. Uh, there is not. So I, to me, I don't know if anyone else wants to know. I do know a lot about it because I am one of the stronger players on my server. So I do do player versus player every kill event. Uh, and I know a lot of tips because I've done a lot of research about it. But I don't know if that's something, as a viewer, you would be interested in. So please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if enough people want it, I will do a player versus player video after this series. The last way to earn points is gathering. Uh, gathering is where I'd recommend 95 to 98% of people go. Uh, it allows you to stay cultivator over the kill event day, right? So the only day you'd have to swap to raider is the only day you'd have to swap to raider is during groundhog, and there's an argument that you don't even have to swap to raider for that because it only boosts your pro unit. Uh, but in my personal opinion, you should swap to raider for that. Um, but now you're yeah, now you're not swapping for kill event. Uh, the reason that you swap to a raider for kill event is because of this buff right here. It allows 40% of your dead, your dead to turn into injured when invading. On that note, if you are the one being hit, you do not lose nearly as many troops as if you were the one that is doing the attacking. So if you're out gathering and someone hits your tile, right? So tiling is where someone would hit this tile right here. Um... If someone tiles you, you do not lose nearly as many troops as if uh, as the person that is hitting that tile itself. You will still have troops that you have to go heal, but you don't lose as many troops. Uh, so the way I'd gather resources, you guys, is I would make a bunch of T1 or T2 carriers. The reason I would make T1 or T2 carriers is it because if we scroll all the way down and we look at a T2 carrier... My load size is 15. If we look at a T3 carrier, my load size is 14. And it goes down the higher we go because other things are improving on the carriers. Um, I would have a bunch of T1s in my personal opinion because they're worth the least amount of points. I'd fill in between 10 to... I'd fill in between 10 to... 20,000 troops in between these and I'd remove all special ants and all insects from the March team uh, And I'd send them out to gather when I send them out to gather I would send them to a pile, right? So like let's say I would never send them to a pile nearby the hill my hill I'd send them out to a pile by flicking my Screen a couple of times and I'd send them to this pile, right? And then I'd flick my screen a couple of times in a different direction and I would send them to gather here, not diamond patch. I'd send them to gather here, right? And then I'd flick them a couple of times in this direction. So that way they're super spread out. 
The reason that is is because if I am the person that's going into attacking, a port is worth 2,000 diamonds, um, and I'm not going to port in for one gathering pile, but if you're gathering here, 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 uh, and these all four are red, and they're obviously the opposing team, I'm going to port in and hit all four for points. Uh, even if you do do that, but it's only 10 to 20,000 uh, T1 carriers, it's worth super few points and not not a very good investment uh, for your opponent. It also benefits your server because you're wasting 20 stamina of a strong player because likely a strong player is the one that is tiling you. And you still get the points for gathering. Uh, you get the gathering points even if your opponent tiles you. The, the purpose of tiling is just to stop you from gathering for a longer period of time. So there's a lot of positives and very little negative to gathering. Uh, the reason I would only send 10 to 20,000 troops T1s for gathering is because it does make it so your troops auto return every two hours, one to two hours. Uh, and that's about as long as I would be out before I'd be worried that, you know, one of the enemies have uh, spotted me and they want to come and hit me. All right, you guys, uh, with that, that'll be the end of my discussions on kill events. I hope that I've made it clear where I stand on the squirters versus player versus player versus gathering and my strategies for it. If you do want to see an in-depth player versus player guide uh, and all the strategies for attacking and stuff like that, please let me know. Uh, I do player versus player every kill event. It is probably my favorite thing to do. Um... And I'm happy to share my wisdom with players and make my life a lot more difficult when going against the people that watch my YouTube video. Uh, that's okay. I'm okay doing that if it means that I, someone else is enjoying the game as much as me. That being said, it does leave us to our final thing for the video today, and that is the $20 Google Play giveaway. Uh, with that said, let me pull it on up. All right, you guys, as you can see, this is the youtube video uh that was for the 400 subscribers so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna right click here and we're gonna click copy we're gonna go to my U trusty youtube subscriber uh random selector giveaway thingy uh then we're gonna click filter duplicate users you only get one chance to enter i don't care if you do it in replied comment or what and then specific text we're gonna scroll it's always in the description below 12 ca day right 12 CA day. Right click copy so you guys can see that I'm copying exactly what I would ask everyone else to do. All right, get YouTube comments. 36 comments. All right, a little bit less than last time, but still higher than our average. Uh, so thank you guys for that. And then we're going to click start right here. All right, cracking. Uh, Congratulations, Kraken. Please, again, let me know. D DM me on Discord. Direct message me on Discord uh, to claim your prize. That being said, remember, in order to be a winner, you must be subscribed to my YouTube channel uh, before uh, this video is released. So if I get a notification that Kraken subscribes to my YouTube channel um, and he is not a subscriber prior to the release of this video, uh, we will be doing a different giveaway because you need to be a part of the 400 people that made it possible to do this giveaway in the first place. Again, my video tomorrow that's going to be releasing it will be the 500, Google, uh, 500 subscriber Google Play giveaway uh, word. Thank you guys so very much. I hope you guys ha had an enjoyable video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you guys want to know about. Especially if you guys want another video about player versus player. I know I went over it quickly. But I wanted to cover all different aspects of Kill Event. Not just specifically player versus player and how to do it. Uh, that being said, you can find me in the YouTube comments. Uh, I try to be there as much as possible, but YouTube does limit the amount of times they notify me about certain t topics. Uh, the best way to find me is 
a direct message on Discord. My name is in the description below. Or, worst case scenario, like I always say, catch me on server 174. Until next time, stay humble, stay happy, stay hungry. Bye, y'all.